Hey everybody, welcome on our channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto was the demon son of Aphrodite and got harem. Huge shout out to Ten Tail Jackal of Doom for this story. If you are new on the channel, don't forget to subscribe our channel and like the video too. So without wasting any more time. Let's start the story. The blonde haired boy of 16 could be seen in front of an army of white beings with plant like features and large glowing white eyes. Behind these white plant zombies was a huge beast with 10 large swing tails. Standing on this beast was a man known as Ichiha Madara, beside him the man behind the entire war. This boy had long flowing blonde hair that had a single bang falling gently over his face. His eyes were electric blue, but seemed to spin into either a deep red or a royal purple. His face was lean and angular, yet held this captivating look. On each side of his face sat three whisker marks. The boy had red long sleeved shirt that was open at the torso, the Yuzumaki swirl on the collar. He had on black pants with a black cloth hanging from halfway up his stomach to his knees, along with red arm guards that covered his forearms and stretched up to reach his upper biceps. Around his waist was a white rope belt tied into a bow. In his right hand was a sword that looked like it had been made of many shark scales, the hilt of said sword even had a mouth. In his left hand was a long sword looking much like a needle, hell it even had thread at the end. On this boy's forehead was a headband with a black cloth. The metal had a very strange symbol carved into it. It looked a perfect fusion of the sun and a crescent moon. This boy is Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, former Jinchuriki of the QB no Kitsune and last soldier of the allied shinobi forces. All others had either fallen or were too injured to help him fight. Even his brother Ichiha Sasuke had fell to the power of the Juubi. So now it was up to him to not only free the tailed beast, but to defeat Abito and Madara. The cracking his neck said, the sends now. I will no longer tolerate any bloodshed. No more of my comrades and friends will fall today. I lend this stupid war with my own two hands and the blood flowing through my veins. Naruto then shot forward, throwing the Nabari, he watched the needle-like sword pierce through the countless white Zetsu. He appearing on the other side, pushed some lightning chakra into the blade, frying the white Zetsu with ease. He swinging the Samahata bisected a good number of Zetsu. He then pulling the needle sword back, dashed towards Abido. Abido not considering Naruto a threat stood there calmly. This would prove to be a fatal mistake. As Naruto shoved Samahata in his chest and lifted up, literally splitting Abido in half vertically. Naruto turning to the shocked Madara, tossed both of his swords into the air and went through hand signs that allied shinobi forces were familiar with. He finishing them cried out Shiki Fuin. Madara gaining wide eyes spotting the Shinigami appear Naruto with a very hungry look on its face. Naruto not even saying a word, watched as the Shinigami reached through his soul and grabbed both the Juubi and Madara's soul. The Shinigami dragging its hands back through Naruto, licked its lips at first, but then said, you have done well young one. You have truly brought everlasting peace to these lands, but I'm afraid your work is far from done. It seems as your mother's dimension needs your help now. Do not worry about the Zetsu army, as they will be taken care of by the allied shinobi forces. But by Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto with his eyes closed vanished in a swirl of darkness, never hearing the loud scream of his name. Naruto opening his eyes blinked finding himself sitting in a classroom listening to some man talk about gods he didn't know about. He looking around scowled spotting all of the twelve-year-olds around him. This was not boding well for him. He lifting his hand up asked may I use the restroom? The teacher turning to him blushed slightly and said why yes you may Mr. Namikaze. He getting out of his chair, walked to the bathroom. Once inside of it, he scowled spotting his twelve-year-old self staring at himself in the mirror. There were a few differences from the old twelve-year-old him. For one his eyes were royal purple, and three rings could be seen surrounding a single round pupil. His hair was less spiky and seemed to curl around his face. Also he was a battler hardened warrior who has seen his fair share of death and war. He then blinked hearing very familiar laughter in his head. He without thinking said in his head stop laughing Karama, before I turn you into your kid form. The laughter from the great fox instantly stopped, but eleven more laughs soon filled his mind. He blinked at this and asked Karama why are there eleven more voices in my head. Karama grumbling said brat you sealed the Juubi inside of yourself along with Madara. You tell me why there are eleven more voices in my head. Naruto face palming said oh great, first I'm turned into a bloody twelve year old and then I get eleven new voices in my head, as if Karama wasn't enough of a headache as it is. Karama snorting said yeah well you're no walk in the park either brat. Naruto with a twitching eyebrow said keep talking trash fox and I'll turn you into a plushie. Karama hearing this wisely shut his mouth. Naruto sighing walked outside of the bathroom, noticing the many blushes he made appear on the females faces as he walked by. He decided to ignore this in favor of getting back to class. It would be a few months later when Naruto would be once again in a boring class, when he heard Madara say kid someone's trying to mess with your mind. 
I sense a powerful illusion trying to take over you. Naruto hearing this simply pushed a small amount of his chakra through his body, dispelling any illusions around him. His eyes then looking at his new teacher, widened spotting what looked like a shriveled up old woman, with leathery skin and glowing eyes. This made him sit up straight in his seat and think, what in Jubi's name is that? He blinked when said Bijuu said in a motherly voice Naruto-chan, what have I told you about invoking my name like it's some kind of curse? Naruto with a twitching eyebrow thought can we do this later kinda creeped out by whatever the hell that thing is. You will be huffing said fine, but prepare for the longest lecture in history, as for what that thing is, well my guess is that it's a fury, one of Hades' torturers. Naruto hearing this blinked and asked so all of that stuff Mr. Brunner was talking about is true. Barama snickering said sure is brat now shut up and pay attention the old hag is about to call on you. Sure enough Mrs. Dodds turning to him asked Mr. Namikaze what is 40 time 120. Naruto considering turning Kurama into a fox plushie said 4, 800. Mrs. Dodds blinking said correct. She then went back to teaching silently fuming that she couldn't catch Naruto not paying attention. Naruto going back to leaning on his hand rolled his eyes when Himatatabi said, it looks like someone's teacher has it bad for him. Naruto then mentally hissed shut at Matatabi before I make you and Shukaku mate. He smirked hearing two whimpers. It would be a few days later when Naruto would be listening to his MP3 player while on his way to a museum with his class, sitting beside the girl who had the biggest crush on him, ignoring the fact that she was tossing peanut butter sandwiches at Grover Underwood. It's not that Naruto wasn't friends with the boy, it's just that the boy needed to stand up for himself without he or that idiot Percy Jackson jumping in. Naruto may have been friends with Grover, but he couldn't stand Percy. When they finally arrived at the museum Mr. Brenner lead the group through the Hall of History. Naruto spotting something that made his eyes widen, moved away from the group. It was a statue in the Japanese section of the museum. It was a bloody statue of him with both of his lost swords in either hand, staring down Jubi. Hell it even had his clothes right, and the hidden stash of candy he hid in the top part of his shirt was there. Naruto touching the statue blinked when he heard Mr. Brunner say ah the statue of the hero. He turning his head watched as Brunner rolled in with a smile on his face. Naruto looking at the man asked the hero. Brunner nodding with a faint smile on his face, said this statue is dedicated to the hero of the world. It is said he was born of two powerful warriors and cursed on that same night with the heavy burden of a demon. It also said that he carried this burden, even becoming friends with it, all the way to his final battle. The beast depicted in the statue is supposed to be the fused version of his demon, along with eight others. It is said he battled the great beast for nine days and nine nights. Until finally with one last mighty swing he forced the beast inside of his sword. Samahada I believe its name is. Both of his swords were lost in time, but it's rumored that Samahada lies at the bottom of the ocean near the prison of the legendary Kraken. The Nabari is said to have been used by Hera to stitch up her many dresses. His headband is said to be carried around by Artemis as a form of honoring one of the few men she'll ever respect. His clothes though were truly lost in time and none have ever seen them again. Mr. Brunner then rolled himself back out of the room, missing the gobsmacked look on Naruto's face. He shaking his head pinched the bridge of his nose and said oh bloody hell. How in the hell did I become a legend over here when all of this happened in a different dimension? Madara snorting said, it does not matter. What does is that the mortals worship you and your heroic deeds have forever been immortalized. Naruto sighing walked outside, blinking spotting what looked like a blonde-haired lady eating lunch with the class and the idiot having the most confused look on his face. He shrugging walked over to Nancy, who instantly started to swoon over him. A few more months later and Naruto was packing his things as it was time for summer break. He had it all planned out, he was going to explore a little, train his skills up, practice his new biju powers, maybe slay a few monsters. Then go find Samahada as he really missed his swords. The Bari would have to wait for a bit longer until he met the gods or something like that. He walking outside of the school, spotting Grover nervously talking to Percy, walked over to Grover and said alright Grover my man. I'm going to be heading out. Got things to do, places to be, deeds to conquer. You know the usual. Grover with a smile on his face, turned to Naruto and shook the boy's hand and said alright Naruto, stay safe and if you even need some help just go the address on the card. Naruto smiling said will do man. He then turning to Percy gained an impassive face and said idiot do try and stay safe this summer. Percy hearing this was very tempted to give Naruto the bird, but decided to walk away instead. Naruto seeing this, decided to hail in taxi. Betting in it, he said 102 East Broadway Street please. The cabbie nodding took Naruto to his apartment. Paying the man, Naruto walked inside of his home and instantly was on guard. The reason why, because of the large chakra signatures in his home. The opening his door, narrowed his eyes, spotting the many females ransacking his home. 
his eyes narrowing even more, was about to unleash his killing intent when Grover came running into his home looking like he'd seen a ghost. Naruto ignoring the women turned to look at Grover who was finally revealing his true form. Naruto sensing the fear rolling off of the satyr's side and said, let me guess the idiot did something stupid and now you're here to get me help track him down. Grover out of breath said yes by the gods he saw the fates cutting his string. Do you know what this means? Naruto running a hand through his hair said yes this means that the next time I see the Shinigami I'm ramming a full powered Rasen shuriken down his throat. Grover blinked hearing this. Naruto ignoring this opened his eyes to reveal his now slitted pupils and blood red eyes. Naruto sniffing the air one said the idiot and some lady smelling like candy are near the ocean about 16 miles to the east. For some reason I also smell bull and metal. Naruto's eyes widened as he said oh dear sweet Raymond. The minotaur is following the idiot. Grover hearing this felt his skin actually pale. Naruto then started to curse like a sailor as he said, I have to save the idiot without Samahadaheim or Nabari-chan. Damn. He then marching past the women, opened his closet and searched through the many different clothes he found. Finding what he was looking for, he shut the closet doors. Grover somehow just now noticing the women started to swoon. Just then the door to the closet opened and out stepped Naruto in his shinobi attire. Without his headband of course. He checking his pouch, nodded counting all of his regular kunai, hiroshin kunai, shuriken and other throwing weapons. He then reaching into his candy pouch, pulled out a cherry lollipop and put it in his mouth. He with serious eyes said come on goatman I got a bull to kill and you've got an idiot to rescue. He turning to the stunned women narrowed his eyes and growled out, I'll deal with you after I get back. He then walking over to Grover said hiroshin no jutsu. He was then gone in a flash of red light. Appearing at the cabin Percy and his mom were staying, Naruto laughed when Grover ran to the nearest bush and puked his guts out. Naruto then looking up side spotting and feeling the huge storm raging around him. Grover gaining his senses back knocked on the door loudly. Naruto turning around started to search for the big bad bull, but the rain was messing with his sense of smell. He was then grabbed by Grover and put in the car along with the idiot and his kinda cute mom. The ignoring the conversation in the car was focused on the bull now following the car. The bull then attacked the car, making it crash inside of a ditch. Getting out of the car, he heard the idiot's mom direct them to the tree at the top of the hill. Naruto never being one to back down from a fight, said oi you stupid son of a cow. I'm going to turn you into a triple cheeseburger and use your horns as toothpicks. The minotaur hearing this roared and charged directly at him. Naruto with a smirk on his face beat his fist back and ran towards the bullman hybrid. He jumping slightly in the air, charged earth chakra to his fist and said superman punch. That punch knocked the bull back, and Naruto was shaking his fine cursing, as he hadn't applied enough earth chakra to his fist. He then hearing an angry roar, looked up spotting the minotaur with murder clear in its eyes. Naruto seeing this said what's the matter dinner did I tenderize you too early. The minotaur rushing towards Naruto was once again hit with another superman punch, this one with more even earth chakra laced into it. Naruto deciding to end this punch the ground hard, causing a mini shock wave to come from around him. He holding his right fist up took off running. Pushing a little wind chakra out of his feet, he was literally in the air. He cried out eat this you triple cheeseburger in the making. Explosion release, Superman punch. The punch landed and the land was rocked by an loud explosion. When the smoke cleared, Naruto could be seen holding a pair of horns with a heavy scowl on his face. He looking up at Grover said, you owe me one goat boy. He then fell forward. His face colliding with soft earth. Grover, Percy and Sally right behind him. Tyron shaking his head picked up Grover, Percy and Sally to take to the camp. He ordered someone to grab Naruto and bring him to the camp. The next day Naruto would wake up and instantly sit up. He rubbing the sleep out of his eyes, blinked not spotting his room. Turning he groaned spotting a girl with blonde hair and grey eyes looking over the idiot and goat boy. Getting out of the bed, he stretched his body out before walking out of the room, ignoring the cries of weight from the blonde haired girl. He walking around the camp scowled spotting all of the cabins. He then spotting a group of rather not cute looking girls heading his way narrowed his eyes, the girls reaching him had arrogant smirks on their faces as the tallest one said, you're one of the new kids that arrived. It's time for your initiation. Naruto sighing said be gone pest I don't have time for your foolish games and if you try me, I will make you regret it. The girls hearing this scowled and decided to teach him a lesson. That was a very bad idea, as Naruto grabbed the hands of the first girl and crushed them, he then kicking the another girl in her stomach, made her fall to her knees curl up and pass out. The last girl he simply flicked her with his finger knocking her out. Naruto then walked away not even noticing at how everyone was staring at him with wide eyes. Naruto finding a forest, would enter it and sit down in a clearing. Closing his eyes he started to meditate, unknowingly entering sage mode. 
He may not have known it, but every natural being did. Animals started to surround him, some fox kits even sitting in his lap. Wood nymphs and dryads were dancing around him. Some satyrs were now bowing lowly to him, even though he wasn't looking. The children of Demeter were swooning over him. Tyron himself walked into the clearing and was amazed at how nature was flowing through and around Naruto with such ease. As if he belonged to it. That's when he finally caught the scent of a demigod coming off of Naruto proving him wrong that Naruto was a monster with a conscious. For some reason though Naruto also had the smell of a very powerful monster coming off of him. Naruto opening his right eye blink spotting all of the things around him. The eye was about to harden when he looked down to find some fox kits yipping happily at him. Smiling he opened both of his eyes and picked up one of the kits. Nuzzling it to his face he didn't pay any attention when every female gained hearts in their eyes. The ending his nuzzling slowly exited his sage mode, shooing the kits away, back to their mothers. He then turning to Brunner said alright Chiron, I'm gonna make a guess that the gods and all of that are true and that this camp is a safe haven for demigods. The idiot is a demigod and the reason why Grover was at Yancey, along why you transferred in right around the middle of the year. Tyron blinking said correct, but how did you know? Naruto snorting said illusions don't work on me and your mist is nothing compared to the mighty eyes of an Achea. Tyron hearing this nodded and asked will you stay in the camp. Naruto yawning said I'll stay here until Friday, then I'm back on the move. Tyron nodding said alright then once Percy wakes up all will be explained. Naruto standing up said sure you do that, until then I'm gonna be working on some things. He then standing up ran to the nearest water source planning on transforming into a sobu to get used to the water, as he was going to get Samahada-chan back, one way or another. But outer and Abari he kinda felt naked, his headband he could wait until he meets Artemis, as he had no doubt in his mind that she was going to meet him one day. Two days later and Naruto was once again meditating, except this time he was doing so on the middle of the lake, drawing upon the natural energy in the water and tapping into the demonic chakra of Isobu. He knew this was churning the water underneath him and was making some demonic things appear. The hearing someone call his name opened his right eye and blinked spotting Annabeth Chase, giving him a sort of powerful glare. Dropping his demi-sage mode, he walked to the shore and asked how may I help you Annabeth Chan. Annabeth resting her hands on her hip said you never answered my question. Naruto blinking said I'm sorry I was distracted by your outstanding beauty and didn't even hear your question. Please do me a favor and remind me of it. Annabeth blushing said I asked you if you wanted to be on my team for the capture the flag came tomorrow. Naruto hearing this asked depends is idiot working with you? Annabeth blinking said yes Percy is going to be on my team. Naruto said then no, because I don't work with idiots and every time I see him Kurama screams at me to let him eat the idiot. He turning around was about to walk back to the middle of the lake when Annabeth grabbed his hand and turned him around. He looking in her eyes blinked when she said you won't be working with him, you'll be working with me. Naruto blinking was about to deny her plea when she did the cursed puppy eye jutsu. This made his eyebrows start twitching as he and all the other voices in his head thought who in the hell invented that cursed jutsu. Naruto sighing said fine, but you owe me big time for this. Annabeth smiling said good. He walking back to the middle of the lake mumbled why do I get the feeling I'm gonna regret this. He ignoring the giggling of the voices in his head, sat down on the water and started his exercise again, ignoring the giggling water sprite swimming around him as he turned the lake into a whirlpool. The day was the day, tonight the capture the flag game happened, and honestly Naruto was ready to get it over with so he can start his world tour. He already planned on starting with Florida, from there he would follow his instincts. The ignoring the armor being placed in front of him said keep the armor, I'm a trained warrior with no need for heavy clunky armor. Besides if I wanted to I could create my own armor. He groaned when Annabeth said stop complaining Naruto and just put the armor on. He closing his eyes said Susanoo. Everyone gasped or stepped back when solid blue armor appeared on Naruto. The only mask even appeared on the right side of his face. He looking at the shocked Annabeth said like I said I don't need that armor. I have my own armor. Now if you excuse me I'm going to return to my thoughts until the game begins. He then spacing out missed the jealousy in Luke's eyes, the amazement in the eyes of the forger's cabin. Annabeth on the other hand was staring at Naruto with nothing but wonder. Finally it was time for the game and Naruto could be seen standing beside Annabeth who said alright Naruto. Since you're the most talented out of all of us. I want you to capture the flag. Try to do so without terribly injuring too many people. Naruto yawning said yeah whatever let's just get this over with already. Annabeth had to resist the urge to not groan at Naruto's bored response. The horn then blew announcing the beginning of the game. Naruto seeing this, decided to fly, so tapping into Chimei's chakra he grew thick wings and fluttered into the sky. The going through hand signs called out creation of all things, kikai beetles, death butterflies, centipedes, giant millipedes, black wasp, hellfire moss. 
A huge poof of smoke occurred, and when it cleared everyone had wide eyes spotting all of the different insects around him. Naruto then said alright it's show time. The insects spread out from their location, and pretty soon people could be seen falling to their faces, being floated away by the butterflies, buried up to their necks by the centipedes, running from the millipedes, being stung by the wasp or rolling around on the ground, trying to put out blue flames. Naruto floating over to Eri's side, spotting the flag unguarded, swooped down at mock speed and snatched the flag. The flying over to the Athena side rolled his eyes spotting Percy panting after getting his but kicked by Clarice and her sisters. The spotting Annabeth staring at him with amazement and a small blush on her face. The wondering why, suddenly remembered that he had taken his top off completely to grow his wings, learning from Sasuke how hard it was to stitch it back together. His entire upper body was visible, and probably his tattooed right arm. This was the arm where all of his war tattoos were. The dropping to the ground, stabbed the flag into the ground, and the victory horn blew. Naruto standing up instantly scowled smelling something that he wasn't supposed to be. His eyes moving to the idiot, moved his eyes slightly up and rolled his eyes. Everyone also following his eyes, gasped. Above Percy's head was an aquamarine trident symbol. Naruto heard Annabeth say oh by the gods. Someone then bowed and said all hail Percy Jackson, son of Poseidon god of the seas and earthquakes. Everyone beside Naruto then bowed. Annabeth giving him a pointed look asked why aren't you bowing? Naruto scoffing said because even if the god of seas is his daddy, he's still an idiot of the highest degree, and I don't give a satyr's furry ass if his dad's one of the big three. Water boy here couldn't last five seconds in my world. Hell none of you could, not even Chiron the mighty trainer of heroes. Naruto's eyes moving to the hellhound that everyone was too distracted to see tossed a kunai and said case in point. The kunai hitting right beside the hound made everyone blink, even the hound. Just then Annabeth got a good look at the kunai, she felt her eyes nearly pop spotting the three blades and the special seal carved into it. She turning to Naruto gasped when Naruto vanished in a flash of red light. Naruto appearing in front of the hellhound with a screeching ball in his hand, said bad dog. Wine style, Rasengan. The Rasengan slamming into the dog made the dog lift into the air, howling in pain. Naruto seeing this, picked up the Hiroshin kunai and tossed it into the air. Clapping his hands together he said kunai shadow clone jutsu. The one kunai then turned into 100 kunai. Naruto activating a black Jidori in one hand and a red Rikiri in the other hand said, it's over. Yuzumaki secret technique, cradle of the flying lightning god jutsu. He then flashed away in a burst of red light, lightning trailing behind him. Naruto speeding around the kunai, linked chakra threads from the Chidori and the Rikiri through the handles of said kunai, literally creating a cradle the hellhound was trapped in. He jumping back, let the cradle land, and crossed his arms, as the hellhound was surrounded on all sides by black and red lightning. Naruto smirking lifted his right hand to the sky and said, this one's for you Sasuke team. He closing his eyes and pushing some of Kurama's chakra into the air, said obliterate all within my path. Kuro Kirin. The massive roar was heard, and people swore that they heard the hellhound whimper in fear. Annabeth moving her head upwards, felt her jaw touch the ground as coiling high above was a dragon as black as the night, with baleful yellow eyes. It was huge, I mean it could literally take up about 16 apartment blocks with ease. It roaring again launched itself down on the hellhound. Naruto appearing before Annabeth wrapped his arms around her and whispered close your eyes, this is going to be bright. Annabeth shutting her eyes tight, sunk into Naruto's embrace, just as Kirin hit and shook the entire camp, hell even the lake shook a little. Naruto then said alright you can open your eyes now. Annabeth and the others doing as he said, gasp spotting a black hole the size of a small house where the hellhound had been, along with a well of glass. Annabeth looking at Naruto who was staring at the spot like it was normal to do something like that. She then noticed something floating above Naruto's head, looked up and saw that it was a pink dove with some plant in its mouth. Everyone gasped seeing this, except Naruto who was wondering what the hell it meant. He then heard Chiron say dear sweet Zeus, a child of Aphrodite, the goddess of love, beauty and eternal youth, who likes to fight and smells like a monster. Naruto blinking said oi you talking sack of glue I don't smell like a monster, it's the freaking Biju, and probably that psycho Madara you smell. Chiron ignoring the insult blinked and asked Biju, as in the great ten beasts said to each rival titan at full power, with the ten supposedly being able to rival a primordial in power. Naruto giving the centaur a deadpan look said no, I'm talking about the biju made of plush and beans you can purchase online. Chiron hearing this asked Naruto this world of yours it wouldn't happen to be the elemental nations would it? Naruto sighing said that's it. That's my home, the place I was born, the place I grew up in, the world I was trained to be a warrior in, the place I was supposed to die in, but the stupid Shinigami decided to send me here, and so help me Kami the next time I see that bastard of a death god, I'm gonna see if it's possible to kill the god of death. 
He then started to grumble in anger, never noticing the wide eyes of everyone around him or how Chiron was stuttering about having the hero in his camp. Naruto ending his grumbling yawned and said I'm bored now, it's time for me to catch some sleep. See you people later. He then teleported away in a flash of red light. The next morning Naruto was walking towards the border, getting ready to leave on his tour, when he felt Annabeth running towards him. Turning around he sighed spotting her with an angry look on her face. She reaching him asked where are you going? Naruto deciding to make a joke said I'm going out for a pack of cigarettes, you want anything from the store? Annabeth scowling said, it's not funny. You can't leave the safety of the camp. A monster will kill you. Naruto snorting said, you got it flipped. If and when a monster comes near me I'm gonna be the one doing the killing. Annabeth scowling deeper said what about Grover? Naruto said goat boy has a job protecting idiot and there's no way I'm helping him do that. Annabeth stomping her right foot down said you can't leave, the camp might fall under attack and we'll need you. Naruto rolling his eyes said there's Hiroshin markers all around the camp, so if I sense the camp in danger, I can just teleport back here and kick some ass. Annabeth sighing said I can't stop you from leaving can I? Naruto smiling said nope. Annabeth flipping her hair back said well fine, but. She then surprised him when she hugged him deeply and said stay safe and write me sometimes. Naruto laughing hugged her back, while secretly placing a Hiroshin marker on her said sure Annabeth. He then separating from her walked out of the border with a determined glint in his eyes. Crossing the border he said it's time to start my journey. First on the list is getting my swords back. I think I'll start with Nabari as I have no bloody idea where the Kraken is imprisoned. Hirama speaking asked so how are you going to get your sword back from Hera? Naruto smiling said easy. I'm going to slay every monster I come across until I attract the attention of the gods. Once I have that I'm going to demand she return my precious Nabari chant to me. Yubi then said oh no, you're not mister. When you meet the gods you are going to show them the proper respect. Naruto snorting said the hell I am. I'm Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, demon the hidden leaf, devil of the allied shinobi forces, and most boss shinobi to ever walk the face of the earth. Yubi then said in a sickly sweet tone, if you don't show them the proper respect, I'm going to make your arms and legs heavy and make you run with limbs weighing 600 pounds. Naruto said yeah you do that, and I'm going to turn you into a rose bush and make Hirama take a dump on you. Yubi then said you do that, and I'll find some way to turn you into a bunny and place you inside a wolf den. Naruto hearing this said do that, and you'll be mating with Shukaku for the rest of my natural born life, or course after I kill all of the wolves. Yubi then said you do that, and I'll make sure you never have children. Naruto was about to respond to that when he came across an entire pack of hellhounds all foaming at the mouth. Naruto cracking his knuckles said put a pin there as I have some dogs to punish. He then rushed forward and like that started slaughtering the hellhounds. A day later and Naruto was laughing as he beat on a cyclops that had decided he looked tasty. All around him more cyclops could be seen, all holding their broken faces or some missing fingers. He then pushing explosive chakra into his hand, punched the cyclops in the face, causing it to explode in a shower of gold dust. He turning to another one spat out a large glob of lava to melt it. He running to another one froze it, then shattered it into pieces. The last two he sliced into tiny pieces with his wind chakra. The laughing walked over to his shirt and put it back on. The yawning walked over to his camp. Packing everything up he started to walk west, ignoring the multiple high-energy signatures following him. The stopping in his tracks turned to the sound of something crying. Entering a forest he blinked spotting a little girl, who looked like she had been lost in the woods for days, bowling her eyes out. Walking over to her he squatted down in front of her and asked what's wrong little one. The girl looking at him with tears in her eyes, said daddy hurt mommy and then bad men came and took him away. Mommy won't stop bleeding and is getting cold. Naruto hearing this figured that her daddy must have seriously injured her mother and the police must have come and taken him away. Sighing he asked why are you out here in the forest? The little girl said I was going to get mommy some herbs like she did for me. Naruto smiling gently stood up and said take me to your mommy little one. I promise I'll heal her right up. The little girl hearing this popped up instantly and drug Naruto to a little cottage in the woods. Naruto spotting a blonde-haired fair-skinned woman leaning against the wall of said cottage with a knife shoved into her stomach, shook his head. He walking over to the woman asked excuse me, can you hear me? The woman whispered help me. Naruto closing his eyes pushed chakra into his eyes. Opening them again he revealed the Jubigan in all of its glory. Making his hands glow with green chakra, he touched the woman and started to heal her. He removing the knife, healed her stomach also. He then turning his hands blue said forbidden jutsu, time reversal. Naruto yawned as the woman's age started to rewind and the many scars covering her body no doubt from her husband vanished. He then standing up turned around and smiled at the wide-eyed little girl. 
Patting the little girl on the head he said, your mommy is fine now. Just wait for her to wake up. Now if you'd excuse me I've got to continue my journey. He then walked away never noticing the stars in the little girl's eyes or the smiling face of the woman hiding behind a tree. The woman turning around said so you are the owner of Nabari-san. Most impressive what you did for that little girl and her mother. She then vanished in a flurry of peacock feathers. Reviewer have a chimp move into your head. About three days later and Naruto was really starting to get pissed off as he had slaughtered over a thousand monsters, including the damn lion, whose pelt he had wrapped around his shoulders. Right now he was staring down a big-ass boar with glowing red eyes. His icy sapphire eyes staring at the boar's burning crimson eyes with no interest at all. Naruto could hear Shukaku screaming for him to kill the stupid pig for daring to stand in front of him, the great and powerful Naruto. Naturally Naruto chose to ignore the very loud and blood-crazy Tanuki. Although the insane raccoon was starting to make a point as the boar had been staring at him for quite a while, and it was starting to get on his nerves. After another five minutes of the pig staring at him Naruto having had enough said either get out of my way pig or become breakfast. The boar snorting swiped one of its feet on the ground. Naruto seeing the side and said so be it. He pulling out the black rod he had managed to create with the help of the still napping Jubi dashed towards the boar, it charging right back at him. He jumping over the boar, stabbed it directly in the spine and said Amaterasu. The boar and the rod was instantly lit on fire, black flames consuming the flesh of the boar. Naruto landing started walking away knowing that the boar was as good as dead. He stopping a mile away sensing the boar still alive, frowned and said, it seems as though I finally have the attention of the gods. Sadly it's just the moron Ares. He walking forward smirked when he heard Madara snort and say god of war my ass. If you were to ever face him in battle you'd wipe the floor with him, even with you wearing about 20 resistance seals. Naruto was about to laugh more when he sensed something heading his way. He turning his head blinked spotting a huge creature with the head of a lion, goat, and with its tail actually being a snake. The creature let out a nasty roar, and Naruto said a chimera a. I hope it can handle me. He then pulling out another black rod, rushed towards the beast, choosing to ignore the very high power signature watching him from not far away. Five minutes later Naruto could be seen walking away from the burning out chimera, as Naruto had shot a blaze release arrow at the poor beast, not only making it slowly burn out, but causing it to experience intense pain. Naruto walking by a tree stopped sensing his Hiroshin tag go crazy on Annabeth. Tossing a Hiroshin kunai into the tree, he pulled out two chakra rods and activated his Sharingan. Vanishing in a flash of red, he appeared just in time to be shown Medusa's eyes. Naruto snorting said so this is the mighty Medusa. I don't see what's so scary about her. Medusa hissing wondered why this boy hadn't turned to stone and why he smelled so much like a strong monster. Naruto turning around spotting Annabeth shielding her eyes side and said this is really stupid. He turning to face Medusa activated Madara's Manjikyu and said be gone eternally from this plane where you are subjugated to the pain and intolerance of the gods. Kamui. Medusa gained wide eyes when she was sucked up by a black portal. Naruto shaking his head knowing that the woman was now safe in his pocket dimension, he sent a projection of Jubi and Nibi to help the poor woman. He then spotting Annabeth still hiding her face, got in very evil ideal. Wrapping both arms around the girl, he started to breath on her ear as he whispered, I knew my face was scary, but to shield your eyes from it is kinda taking things too far don't you think dear? Annabeth shivering, moved her eyes and gasped finding herself in a paradise, as gorgeous flowers, animals and even a waterfall could be seen. She then feeling someone's hands wrapped around her turned and blushed, spotting Naruto's very handsome face, his longer canine teeth glinting in the light. Naruto kissing the side of her neck said this is your personal paradise Annabeth. What a lovely place. Annabeth was about to say something when she heard Grover ask Annabeth are you alright. The paradise vanished and Annabeth found herself being looked over by a worried Percy and Grover, Naruto nowhere in sight. She blushing deeply said I'm fine come on let's get moving again, we have to find the master bolt before war is started. She then left wondering what had just happened. Naruto sitting in his camp that night heard Kurama say damn kit that was a very good illusion. It seems I'm rubbing off on you after all. Naruto laughing thought no I just thought it would be funny to see her personal paradise. Who knew that she would include me in such world. Kurama was about to say something when Madara said boy there is someone here and we both know you hate being spied on. Naruto sensing the powerful energy signature not too far from his campsite, activated his Jubigan and glared at the trees and said whoever you are you have five seconds to reveal yourself before I let the flames of Amaterasu burn everything in my path. Nothing happened at first until a woman slowly walked out of the bushes, revealing Aphrodite in her Kashina form. She had the happiest smile on her face for some reason. Naruto spotting her deactivated his Jubigan and said oh it's you. I thought it was someone worth my time. 
Li then turned to look up at the stars, ignoring the scowl that appeared on her face. She walking towards the camp asked aren't you glad to see me? Naruto snorting said I'm not and wouldn't be even if we're holding Nabari-chan, my headband and Samahataheim. Aphrodite hearing this scowled deeper and asked why aren't you happy to see your mother? Naruto rolling his eyes said because my mother is dead. Her name was Ichihamikoto, and she was killed when I was six by her eldest child, because her stupid clan was planning to overthrow the Hokage. Since then I have been alone and adrift. The ignoring the deep scowl on her face said, my hands are bathed in the blood of my enemies and allies alike. I killed my brother to rescue him from a pale snake, murdered my cousin because he was trying to take something away from me, massacred an entire village because the pale snake was hiding there. My only friends are Samahataheim and Nabari-chan. I am not a man, nor am I demigod. I am the devil of the allied shinobi forces, Jinchuriki of all ten-tailed beast, cursed son of Namikaze Minato. I am the harbinger of Amaterasu, prophet of Tsukiyomi, adopted sibling of Susanoo, and beloved of Chaos, Order and Kotamatsukami. I am the demon of the lost world and wielder of the Jubigan. He closing his eyes said I am not your son, as I am not a loving person. Thus I don't care for you but. He then opening his eyes to reveal the Jubigan said, I will not tolerate your presence anywhere near me. I hate not only you but Zeus for his stupidity, Ares for his arrogance, Hercules for his arrogance, and many of the other gods for not claiming their children. I bear no ill will towards Hera, Athena, Persephone. Artemis, Hades, and Hermes. He then smirking said after all us thieves have to stick together. Aphrodite hearing this felt tears gather in her eyes as she asked is this because I left you in that world or that I'm still with Ares? If it is I'll stop, just don't hate me. Naruto standing up said hatred is a part of the human cycle. I am most likely going to hate you until the day I die. That is if I ever die, as Juu Chan has informed me that because of the eleven immortal beings I hold inside of me I am immortal. Oh well guess I'll roam until I validate my existence and destroy all in my path. He then standing up pointed his hand at the forest and said burn out. Amaterasu. Aphrodite's eyes widened when from his hands black flames shot and started to consume the forest, and the cries of many monsters could be heard as they were burned alive. He then walked away from her, not even turning around when she vanished in a flurry of leaves. Three days later and Naruto was sitting on top of the Lincoln Memorial, his blue eyes focused on many people moving around. Right now he was trying to figure out what to do with the bloody people following him. At first he had thought about killing them, but then decided that he didn't want to spill innocent blood if he didn't have to. He was also ignoring the stupid monster all around him. His eyes moving to the hellhound snapping at his feet, sighed and said, the titan of time sure is anxious to stop me for some reason, as I'm already pissed at one god of death, Hades wouldn't dare turn my anger on him. He then jumping down said oh well. He landing on one of the hounds said devour all in my path. Amaterasu. The monsters never stood a chance as the flames consumed them, like pizza at a teenage party. Naruto dusting himself off, suddenly sensing something heading his way, braced himself, just in time to be hit by a hydra. Naruto rolling over scowled at the beast and said I'm going to make you pay for that. He then closing his eyes, pushed a decent amount of chakra into himself. Opening his eyes which were now Madara's eternal Manjiku Sharingan he cried out Susanoo. When he said this a giant blue being appeared, it holding a long katana in its left hand. The demon warrior with the movement of Naruto brought the giant blade down on the hydra, slicing off May of its heads. Naruto knowing it wasn't over jumped back a good distance and waited. Sure enough the hydra grew back its heads until it now had 15 heads. Naruto seeing this, made the sword vanish and be replaced with an bow loaded with a black flaming arrow. He firing the arrow, said, you will have to try harder Kronos, as a weak hydra is nothing compared to the might of a rampaging biju. The hydra screamed in pain as the arrow started to burn through its heart. Naruto turning away, blinked feeling a pull from Annabeth once again. Sighing he flashed to her location just in time to catch a fireball from a ugly bird. He crushing the fireball said Ichidna, I suggest you take your children and move along because I'm really not in the mood to deal with you right now. The mother of all monster sneering said boy you should be cringing in fear at me, not trying to boss me around. Naruto snorting said I tried to warn you, but now you must suffer the punishment. He then said Chibaku Tensei. Everyone felt their eyes widen when the mother of all monsters was shot into the sky, along with her children. Huge chunks of earth started to float into the air, along with metal and some water. Once it was looking like another moon, Naruto pushed it into the sky and said be forever trapped inside my new moon. The thing was now in space and all could see it floating higher into the sky. Naruto then closing his eyes walked up to Annabeth who had wide eyes. Smiling at her he said, you really need to learn to stay calm babe, I can't have you summoning me for any reason. He then opening his eyes vanished in a red flash back to his previous spot, missing Annabeth crying out for him. 
Arriving back at the memorial he walked past the burning hydra and said it's about time for another god to make their presence known. The walking inside the museum side and said oh joy I can't wait. He then stilled when he heard a divine voice ask, can't wait for what? He turning his head blinked spotting Apollo the sun god standing with Hermes. Naruto relaxing said so it's the sun god and my comrade. He then smiling walked over to Hermes and shook hands with the god who smiled back at him. He shook hands with Apollo also and asked what can I do for the two of you? Apollo smiling said nothing we came to warn you that Ares is coming for you, apparently Aphrodite kicked him to curb and decided she wanted true love. Also Zeus is not happy with what you did to his pets. Naruto snorting said Ares had better stay away from me if he doesn't want to meet the true face of war and as for old lightning but he can go kick rocks for all I care. Hermes hearing this giggled while Apollo was roaring in laughter. Naruto then walking out of the museum never even noticed both gods vanishing in a gust of wind. He walking to an empty clearing in the forest took off his shirt and said alright it's time to start training with my Juubi form. He was about to start pushing demonic chakra into him when he heard Madara say no it's time to finish your training in controlling the perfect form Susanoo. Naruto sweat dropping could only wonder what he had gotten himself into. About a day later Naruto was sitting on the shore of a beach, his hair actually laying flat for once. The strange part was the ten wolf tails swaying lazily behind him, along with the many small lizards laying around him or sitting on his shoulders. Naruto was sitting on the shore of this beach, wondering if he should get out of Yubi mode and actually start training in sage mode, or if he should go fishing, because he was kin to hungry. The yawning turned his eyes to the ocean and licked his lips, sensing the many life forces of the many aquatic animals. The standing up said I guess I just found my answer. It's lunch time. He then making his tails turn into spears, launched them into the ocean. The tails were like rockets as they dove into the ocean, searching for something for Naruto to consume. He then looking down at one of the lizards, said Dio I will be training in sage mode later, announced this to the elder dragons. Right now I am hungry and fish is on the menu. The lizard on his shoulder nodded and banished in a poof of smoke with the other lizards. Naruto then feeling weight on his tails, smiled and pulled them out of the ocean. He smiled spotting the many fish on his tails, all of them dead. He then pushing fire chakra into his tails, started to slowly cook the fish. He sitting back down closed his eyes and said I got time to kill while these cook. Let's see how my voice affects the monsters around me. He then summoning a guitar started to strum it getting it tuned. When he finished tuning it he smiled and said here we go. Where are the heroes by the red jumpsuit apparatus? I don't own. Where are the heroes? It's dark out. The water falls to the ground. I shift gears. No one cares if I make it out. Break light glare, my blank stare tells what I'm. About. Quitting is east when no one's around. Late it's too late to get it right. Whenever I try. Red lights pass. My life flashes before my eyes. Late it's too late to get it right. When all I find are villains and zeros. Where are the heroes? I know you've been here before in your life. I came through. And now you're nowhere left in sight. Leaving is easy when no one's around. Late it's too late to get it right. Whenever I try. Red lights pass. My life flashes before my eyes. Late it's too late to get it right. When all I find are villains and zeros. Where are the heroes? Where are the heroes? Where are the? Where are the? Where are the heroes? Where are the? Where are the? Where are the heroes? Where are the heroes? Where are the heroes? Where are the heroes? Late it's too late to get it right. Whenever I try. Red lights pass. My life flashes before my eyes. Late it's too late to get it right. When all I find are villains and zeros. Where are the heroes? Where are the heroes? Where are the heroes? Villains and zeros. Where are the heroes? Naruto ending the song, smiled as all of the fish was cooked. He munching on a few of the fish, laughed hearing the spirits wounding for him, as his song must have touched their hearts. He not caring smiled as he ate his wonderful fish. He then looking towards the sky laugh spotting Apollo give him the thumbs up, apparently approving of his little number. A few days later and Naruto was making his way towards where he sensed Annabeth, Grover and the idiot. He pushing open the door to the restaurant blinked finding the three sitting across from Ares. He couldn't help but let a pleased smirk appear on his face spotting this. He walking past the waitress, leaned on the seat Ares was in. Said God looking up snarled spotting Naruto. He standing to his feet asked what are you doing here you little shit. Naruto smirking said I sensed my babe was in trouble and like the baddest I am came to take care of it. The allowing his eyes to morph into their Jubigan appearance said imagine my surprise finding the one of God of War sitting across from my babe. Ares with an angry snarl on his face asked who you calling a wanted. Naruto smirking said the little bitch in front of me, that's who. Ares hearing this was shaking with rage. Naruto laughing asked are you mad bro? 
Barry's turning to Percy said get me what I asked and I'll get you three rides. He then stormed out of the dinner. Naruto laughing sat down where he had been and said I love taunting people. He then turning to the waitress said yo lady bring a guy some grub will you? The waitress blushing said sure sir. Naruto laughing turned to Annabeth and asked so what did the wannab ask you to get? Annabeth with an angry glare said you should stop taunting him like that Naruto, he could kill you. Naruto hearing this snorted and started to laugh very loudly. He ending his laughter said, greater beings have tried and failed to kill me babe. Hell one of them resides inside of me. He then gaining a serious face said besides only people who fear him respect him. He blinked when a huge plate of food was set in front of him by the blushing waitress who said cook says it's on the house. Naruto smiling a dazzling smile said tell them I said thanks. He was about to dig into his food when he noticed Percy trying to drag Grover and Annabeth with him somewhere. Naruto shaking his head said he's a bloody idiot and his foolishness is going to get either Annabeth or Grover hurt one day. He sighing turned to the waitress and asked can I get this in a to-go plate. She still with a heavy blush on her face nodded and said sure. Naruto now walking down the highway was wondering if he should be worried about the monsters following him or not. He thinking on it decided they weren't worth his time. He arriving at the water park Aries had sent Annabeth and the others rolled his eyes and said this smells prank. He jumping the fence in one go, walked in and watched as Annabeth and Idiot were about to crash to the ground. Rolling his eyes he tossed a single kunai and grabbed Annabeth before Percy could. Naruto looking down at the wide-eyed Annabeth said seriously babe, this entire thing smelled prank, and you, the idiot and goat boy walked right into it. He setting down on the water walked over it and onto the ground. He setting the blushing Annabeth down turned to Grover and asked yo are the monsters still following me like lovesick puppies. Grover sniffing the air gained wide eyes and nodded. Naruto smirking said good let me show whatever fool that set this prank up, what happens when you threaten my babe. Naruto letting the gate open smirked when the monsters came pouring in. He feeling Annabeth get behind him smirked and said behold babe the majesty of the Susanoo. Percy and Grover gained wide eyes when a huge skeletal figure appeared that quickly gained flesh and bone. It looked like some kind of demon from your worst nightmare. The thing that terrified the monsters was that it was holding a bow and arrow. Naruto drawing back the arrow said idiot, Grover I'd seek shelter if I were you. Grover quickly hid in a shack dragging Percy with him. Naruto spotting this pointed the bow into the sky and watched as the tip of the arrow caught on fire. The flames were as black as the night. Naruto turning to the camera said pierce the heavens. Blaze style, dance of the dead. The arrow was then shot into the air and Annabeth gained wide eyes when it started to rain black fire, burning the monsters alive. When all of the monsters died Naruto let his Susanoo fade away and said that is what happens. Ares you trick my babe into something like this again and I'll be taking over the mantle of God of War. He turning to look at the shocked Annabeth said, or maybe God of Destruction. I've always liked blowing shit up. He then looking at Percy said head to Vegas and get lightning ass his giant toy before I send a Bijuadama to Mount Olympus and take him the fuck out. He then giving the camera the finger said by the way if you don't know who I am, let me inform you. He starting to flicker like flames said I am the devil of the allied shinobi forces. He then burst into black flames and the sky lit up like Apollo was moving the sun across the sky. Naruto letting his ten tails appear said I am the new Jubi. The flames increasing in intensity was now starting to burn the ground he stood on. He summoning a black chakra rod tossed it into the water and cackled with the water, literally started to vaporize. He then said I am cursed son of Nami Kazi Minato. He then letting out his killing intent, let his chakra take the form of Kurama and said I am the Jinchuriki of all ten-tailed beast and the insane Ichiha Madara. The flames starting to burn the place down, started to take the forms of roaring beast. Naruto laughing said I am the demon son of Ichiha Makoto, the hungry brother of Ichiha Sasuke, the lonely killer of Ichiha Itachi. He was starting to vanish, but the flames were still burning brightly. He smirking said I am the hatred of every single child ever left alone by his or her godly parent. The flames had now consumed most of the theme park and Naruto was mostly gone. His eyes spinning said I am destruction incarnate. I am Yuzumaki Naruto. The place then exploded and all that remained of Naruto was his blazing spinning eyes. Said eyes sent chills down almost every god's spine. Zeus with anger clear on his face said Hercules go take that little shit down. Aphrodite hearing this gained wide eyes. Apollo shaking his head said dad I wouldn't do that. Zeus turning to him asked why not. Apollo said because Hercules is going to die if he fights Naruto. Naruto is practically a god already. Hera hearing this said Hercules should face this demigod. Artemis having Naruto's headband around her neck said yes he should. Zeus hearing this said it's been decided then. Hercules will kill the little bastard. Hercules walking forward smirked and said it will be my honor. He then vanished. Ares with a smirk on his face said that little shit will rue the day he called me a one of god. 
Aphrodite was very worried for Naruto. Hera planned on watching the fight closely. Artemis planned on watching it with her hunters wanting to see if Naruto was really the hero he was supposed to be. Naruto sitting on the head of a dead cyclops said I wonder how the pricks are going to respond. He then moving his head to the left blinked spotting Hercules with his hand held out. Naruto smirking said of course lighting ass would send Jercules after me. Hercules glaring at him said, you need to be taught manners. Naruto snorting hopped down and said, you need to stop riding your daddy's beep. Hercules snarled hearing this and rushed toward Naruto. Naruto having already seen this coming, dodged to the left and said too slow. Hercules winging was bent over when Naruto punched him in the stomach. He standing back up tried to punch Naruto again. Naruto ducking under said punch kicked Hercules in the chin. Hercules growling punched the ground. Naruto spotting the cracks heading his way, stomped on the ground and literally split the earth open. Hercules stopping himself from falling into the ground, charged towards Naruto who jumped over his reckless charge and kicked him in the back of the head. Hercules growling tossed his shield at Naruto. His eyes widened when Naruto caught the shield, spun around and tossed it back at him with greater force. Hercules crashing into a tree growled. His eyes widened when Naruto appeared in front of him and started to beat him like he stole something. He grabbing Naruto's fist smirk thinking that he had the upper hand. Naruto rolling his eyes said boom. Hercules was then sent flying backwards by an explosion. Naruto appearing near a tree was cleaning his nails. He looking at the struggling to stand Hercules asked is this all you got? Hercules roaring dashed towards Naruto who started to dodge all of his attacks while still cleaning his nails. This was pissing Hercules off and Naruto knew it. Naruto leaning backwards asked aren't you supposed to be some kind of god? Hercules screaming said I am a god. Naruto hearing this kicked Hercules in the stomach and said no you're just a spoiled little brat that needs a reality check. Naruto then stopping the cleaning of his nails said lucky for you dumbass. I got just what you need. He then punched the shit out of Hercules, sending him flying backwards. He flashing in front of Hercules kicked the god into the air. Naruto appearing above Hercules punched him in the arm. This caused Hercules to spin. Naruto summoning one of his black rods, stabbed it into Hercules' hand. He then connecting a chain to the end of said rod, slammed Hercules down into the ground. He then sent a jolt of lighting down the chain, causing Hercules to scream in pure pain. Naruto whipping the chain forced Hercules into the air once again. Naruto summoning even more chains sent them forward, piercing Hercules everywhere. Naruto walking up one of the larger chains looked Hercules in the eyes and said don't worry jerk it's almost over. Naruto jumping into the air said blaze release, the devil's brand. The chains then caught on fire with black flames. It started to burn Hercules who was screaming so loud heaven could hear it. Naruto watching Hercules burn was waiting for the proper moment. This moment happened when Hercules looked him in the eyes and begged to be let go. Naruto snorting said not happening. By the way Tsukiyomi. Hercules stopped screaming for about 5 minutes and the flames went out. Hercules then screamed even louder and the golden blood of the god started to spill from his ears, eyes and nose. Naruto closing his eyes turned around and said for a supposed god, you are very weak. Don't worry I'm sure daddy can fix that also. Naruto walking away said oh what a wonderful life. He then vanished leaving a comatose Hercules chained up in the forest. The gods watching this were shocked. Hera was pretending to be shocked but was really very happy that Hercules had just gotten his ass handed to him. Apollo was fighting every urge in his body to not burst out laughing spotting Hercules looking like someone's puppet. Dionysus couldn't wait to tell the camp what he had just seen. Hermes was doing the same as Apollo. Athena was wondering if she should have sex with Naruto or not. Artemis with her hunters was staring at what had just been done to Hercules with wide eyes. She turning to her second in command could see the shock and awe in her eyes. Ares was literally foaming at the mouth spotting his brother hanging suspended in the air by chains, looking like he had just been destroyed. Poseidon was wondering if he should be worried about his son or not. Demeter was wondering if Naruto ate oats. Hestia tending to the fire was trying not to drool at the pure power coming off of Naruto. Aphrodite was astonished at how brutal, how powerful, how fucking sexy her son was. Zeus was doing the same as Ares and was already planning on sending someone on a quest to save Hercules. Hades in the underworld was laughing so hard he was literally crying at how bad Hercules got his ass kicked. Persephone was licking her lips wanting a piece of Naruto. Naruto sitting in his campsite for the night was wondering if he went to easy on Hercules. He blinked when Karama said if that was easy, then I don't want to know what going hard on him looks like. Yubi rolling her eyes said don't encourage him Karama. That was showing off Naruchan. Naruto rolling his eyes was about to say something when Shukaku said that was fucking awesome. You made that stupid motherfucker your bitch. Naruto had to laugh at Shukaku. He then blinked feeling someone entering his camp. 
Sitting up he blinked finding a rather fetching woman dressed in a pitch black dress that hugged her in all the right places. He was about to stand up when she said no please stay seated. Naruto blinking asked who are you? She smiling said I am Nyx primordial of the night. Naruto hearing this blinked and asked what can I do for you? Nyx giggling asked is there somewhere a little less open? Naruto blinking knocked on the ground twice and Nyx watched as a mansion made of wood rose from the ground. Naruto getting up led her into his mansion. He sitting in a comfy chair asked again what can I do for you? Nyx walking into the mansion smiled and dropped her dress, making Naruto's eyes widen. She walking over to him smiled and said, you can make sweet love with me. Naruto's brain was trying to restart but his beep was standing to full attention. The tailed beast inside of him, male and female, were all gaping like a fish. Madara who was normally a arrogant person, said tap that now. This kick started Naruto's brain and he said it would be my honor. Nick smiling then pounced on Naruto and the sound of clothing ripping could be heard. The next morning Naruto was laid out in the middle of his bed, Nick's lying on top of him. Naruto's eyes shooting open blinked finding Nick still on top of him. His movement must have woken her up as she opened her eyes and stared into his gorgeous blue eyes. She smiling at him said good morning. Naruto looking at her asked shouldn't you be gone since you're the primordial of the night. She giggling said I can leave anytime I want and right now I don't want to leave. Naruto hearing this asked any particular reason. Nick's nodding moved her lower body around making him groan. She laughing said because for the first time in so long I feel loved and full. Naruto hearing this blinked and asked so you're staying because I made you feel good. She smiling kissed him and said that and I think I might be falling for you. Naruto hearing this asked how when we just met yesterday. She smiling said no you met a construct of mine back in the elemental nations. I believe she was named Kurinai. Naruto hearing this gained wide eyes and asked your Kurinai Haim. Nick's laughing said yes she was a construct of me. Naruto blinking asked what happened to her. Nick smiling said she lived a long life and raised a Suma junior of course she was lonely as both people she loved had died in battle. Naruto hearing this sighed and said first a Suma sensei, then the Shinigami goes and sends me here. She nodding said yes, but once she died she rejoined me and I had to sort through the memories and feelings. She smiling at him said I threw a lot of it away, but you and all of her memories and experiences with you I kept. Naruto hearing this asked why. She smiling brightly at him said because you made her the happiest, even when she was with Asuma. You even comforted her when she learned of his death and got revenge for her. You helped her raise Asuma's kid and showered her with love and affection. You even took down pain because of him trying to crush her with a building. Naruto blushing said well shucks. Nick's giggling said plus we both thought that your blush was so cute. Naruto smiled hearing this. Nyx laying her head down on his chest said I know that you're gonna have a harem Naruto-kun and I want to be part of it. Naruto hearing this nodded and asked what should I call you then. Nyx smiling said call me Nai-chan. Naruto smiling said okay Nai-chan. Nyx giggling asked you ready for round 12. Naruto laughing said I think you're confused my dear, this is round 13. Nyx giggling said it doesn't really matter which round it is. Naruto bucking his hips and making her moan said nope, because by the end of it, you'll be screaming my name so loud the heavens can hear it anyway. Nick smiling said damn right I am the two of them then started to have sex once again. A little while later and Naruto was sitting on a beach waiting for his bay, idiot and Grover to arrive. Nai-chan was in their mansion petting Kurama who he had let out in kit form. Naruto could hear the fox purring and he was so going to hold that over the fox's head. His eyes then shifted when Annabeth, Grover and Percy all appeared, with Percy holding the master bolt. Naruto wasn't shocked to see him holding it because he knew that it was in the pack the water boy had gotten from Ares. Naruto had let it proceed mainly because he wanted to kick the god of war ass anyway. He standing up counted down in his head before said god arrived. Sure enough Ares appeared and somehow not noticing him talked to Percy, Annabeth and Grover. He then summoned a boar to attack the three. Naruto stomping his foot created a huge hand of sand and crushed the boar before it could even move. Suddenly all eyes turned to him. Smirking he said so the one of God and the crybaby titan have teamed up. Can't say I wasn't expecting it. Ares glaring with hate at him said I'm gonna get you for what you did to my brother. Naruto shedding his shirt and cracking his knuckles said bring it on bitch. Ares roaring charged at Naruto who let the wrench ring and bleed into his eyes. He dashing towards Ares, clashed fist with him, sending a powerful shockwave across the beach. Ares swinging with the sword in his other hand, growled when Naruto countered it with Madara's gun by. This made a metal clang ring out. Naruto with an bloodthirsty smirk on his face said oh yes. Give me a good fight Wana or your precious father will lose his son today. Ares growling tried to force Naruto to move, but Naruto didn't budge. Naruto shocking Ares and making the gods watching gasp, literally grew another arm and hand out of his body. This hand quickly started to go through hand signs. Naruto smirking said Shoten, 
crystal encampment wall. Eyes nearly popped out of sockets when a huge wall of crystal literally formed in front of Annabeth, Grover and Percy. Naruto once this was done jumped back and started to blur through hand signs with all three hands. He finishing cried out water lightning fire style, XYZ dragon jutsu. He then unleashed a absolutely gigantic dragon that ripped up the very ground around it and made the very air tremble as it barreled towards Ares. Ares rolling to the left watched as the dragon soared out over the ocean and exploded into a bright light. He snarling charged towards Naruto with his sword once again. Naruto laughing swung with his gun by and actually managed to knock the sword out of Ares' hands. Naruto laughing jumped into the air and caught the sword he had just knocked out of Ares' hand with his third hand. He then to the continued shock of everyone watching grew another arm. He landing started to blur through hand signs with his original two hands and landed on Tiger. He taking a deep breath in said fire style, flight of the blazing dragon jutsu. He then unleashed an unholy torrent of flames from his mouth that literally turned all of the sand it touched into glass. Ares with wide eyes tried to dodge this attack but was hit directly in his chest. This caused the god of war to cry out in pure pain. Naruto ending the jutsu, dashed forward and slammed his gun by into Ares' side. The once Ares bent over from the force of the attack, kicked the god of war in the face, making the man lean back. Naruto of course used this opportunity to slash the man across the face with his own sword. Ares screamed in pain as his golden blood actually spilled into his eyes. Naruto kicking the man laughed as he landed in the ocean. Blurring through more hand signs, this time with all four hands he said Shakuten, truth in their eyes Jutsu. Suddenly Ten Tamo appeared and launched at Ares, who was forced to scream in pure agony as his body was literally burned from the inside out. Naruto laughing coated the sword of Ares in demonic chakra and tossed it at the man. The blade lodging into Ares made the man scream as the demonic chakra burned into his body. Ares ripping his sword out growled and changed his sword into a spear. He charging towards Naruto said take this you little shit. Naruto spotting the electricity coming from the spear, smirked and blurred through more hand signs, and soon the beach was filled with the sound of crackling electricity. Naruto was now holding for Chidori. Naruto dashing forward said allow me to show you what lightning looks like. The then surging chakra through his body made the Chidori gain intensity. Naruto nearly at Ares, spun in and with his elbow snapped the spear in half, shocking Ares. Naruto then spinning again kicked Ares towards the water once more. Once the man hit the water, Naruto tossed all four Chidori into the air and watched as they connected with the charges in the air and formed mighty clouds above him. Naruto laughing turned to look Annabeth directly in the eyes. He said watch this bay, I just came up with it. The cry of thunder was then heard and actual rain started to pelt the part of the beach not behind a barrier. Naruto lifting up his right hand said do tell me how this feels dumbass. True storm style, electrokinetic murderous playground jutsu. When he said this a huge bolt of dark red lightning literally struck the exact spot where he was standing. Annabeth with wide eyes screamed Naruto. Ares getting out of the ocean smirked thinking that it was over when suddenly a searing pain could be felt coming from his right hand. He looking at said appendage gained wide eyes as he no longer had a right hand, all that was there was a bleeding stump. Ares was in shock wondering how this was possible when suddenly Naruto's taunting laughter could be heard. Annabeth the other two also hearing this laughter gained wide eyes wondering where Naruto was. Hell some of the gods watching were wondering where Naruto was. Suddenly the air started to spark and these sparks slowly formed a face. Annabeth gained wide eyes spotting Naruto's face laughing in the air. Naruto still laughing said this is the genius of my jutsu. I am now literally one with lightning and this storm is my playground. Ares wasn't the only one to blanch hearing this as this attack was truly genius and beyond anything anyone had ever come up with. Naruto laughing said now then back to the destruction of a god. The sparks then dispersed, and Ares cried out in pain as a huge slash appeared across his back. He cried out again when another slash appeared on his left leg. Ares picking up the sand, covered himself with it. Smirking he said I just found a way around your attacks. Naruto's taunting laughter could once again be heard. The laughter stopping said you truly are the very definition of idiot. Fool that sand is soaked with water, and even if it wasn't it's raining dipshit, meaning that the sand would quickly become soaked or wash off. Ares gained wide eyes as if figuring this out. He had no time to do anything else as he was launched clear out into the ocean, and once he actually hit the water, he lit up like a Christmas tree. Ares was screaming out in pure agony as currents coursed through his body. Percy spotting this asked what the hell. Naruto's voice could be heard saying even the ocean has an electric charge right now, and since it is after all water. Annabeth quickly said Ares is in a world of pain unlike anything anyone has ever been put in. Naruto's voice was heard saying correct my beautiful Annabeth. Annabeth blushed hearing this. The gods were shocked watching this battle between gods. Hera was simply shocked out of her mind spotting the man she was quickly becoming smitten with kicking her son's ass with ease. 
Aphrodite was trying to stop the perverted thoughts flooding her mind, spotting Naruto easily kick her ex-boyfriend's ass with the practice and ease of a sixth grader. Hell he was kicking Ares' ass like it was just a simple training exercise. Athena was nodding to her decision to have sex with Naruto, as the man was proving himself to be very capable in battle, and his intelligence was beyond any mortal she had ever seen. Apollo was watching Naruto move and was amazed at how much it resembled a dance, a deadly dance at that. Hermes did not envy Ares at all and was honestly already picturing Naruto's ascension to godhood. He couldn't stop the smirk that appeared on his face if he tried as he could already feel how drunk he was going to get from that party. Poseidon was happy that his son didn't have to fight anymore but was also worried because he could tell that Percy had a thing for Athena's daughter, which would not end well. Zeus was stewing in his anger as what Naruto was doing shouldn't be possible and only he should be able to do. Dionysus broadcasting this battle to the camp was starting to like Naruto more and more. Artemis broadcasting the battle to her hunters couldn't believe the power Naruto had at his disposal or that Naruto was actually facing a god in battle. Hestia tending to the fire was making plans to lose her virginity to Naruto as he was too damn sexy for her to resist. Hephaestus watching Naruto kick Ares like a low-down dirty dog, smiled already liking this kid and thinking of meeting him. The other gods were simply shocked at what they were seeing. Ares managing to climb out of the ocean, glared at Naruto and said you little brat. It's time I stopped playing games with you. He then roared and became shrouded in a bright light. Annabeth spotting this quickly said cover your eyes he's going into full god mode. Percy and Grover quickly shielded their eyes and even turned away. When the light finally died down, Ares was now standing there coated in a red aura and completely healed from any injuries Naruto had given him. Smirking he said, now I'll kill you Brad and Aphrodite will once again be mine. His response was Naruto's taunting laughter. Naruto actually appearing was still laughing. Ares snarling at this charge towards Naruto and punched him clean in the jaw, sending him flying. Ares smirking said hey got you Brad. When the smoke cleared Naruto could be seen laying in the sand, no longer laughing. Naruto slowly standing up had a cold impassive look on his face, but his eyes revealed just how angry he was. Naruto walking forward said, you want to stop playing games. Then so be it. He making the ram hand sign said, you will be the first to bear witness to my god form. All eyes wide in hearing this, and Percy was the first to ask, did he just say his god form? Annabeth nodding numbly said he did. Naruto shutting both of his eyes was soon inside of his mindscape. He looking Jubi directly in the eyes said it's time Jubi. She nodding leaned forward and touched her forehead to Naruto and quickly started to vanish. On the outside a slit on the middle of Naruto's forehead slowly opened and everyone blinked when the Rinshiringan appeared in the slit. A tremendous amount of energy then hit the entire world and a black aura appeared around Naruto. Naruto's shirt burned off from this aura and his four powerful arms were now glowing with pure power. A huge pair of wings then appeared from his back looking much like that of an eagle. Ten large lion tails appeared. The power then gained a dark feeling to it, and several humans, animals and even some gods, felt their pants get heavy, having shit their own pants. Naruto slowly opening his main eyes revealed ice-cold blue eyes. He then dropped out of the ram hand sign and said behold the face of the god of destruction and your death Ares. Ares snorting said you can't kill me brat, no matter what you do to yourself. Naruto snorting said we will see. He then vanished and Ares was hunched over from the sheer power behind Naruto's punch to his stomach. He was then launched into the air by an uppercut from Naruto. One of Naruto's tails then grabbed the god by his ankles and slammed him back down, slamming him into the ocean. Naruto blurring through hand signs said Hyoten, temple of the almighty god of frost jutsu. Jaws literally scraped the ground when the very air and the water froze, turning into a giant building that looked like it could belong to some long lost god. Ares inside of said temple was trying to stop himself from shivering at how cold it was. His eyes widened when Naruto appeared inside of the ice with that same impassive look on his face. Ares growling punched the ice but gained wide eyes when he didn't even dent the structure. He then heard Naruto's voice from all around him saying this ice is beyond the power of mortals and to be frank, beyond the power of gods. This ice was created with the very power of a primordial goddess and nothing short than a titan can break free of this temple. Ares hearing this lost all color in his face and the smell of shit tainted the air. Naruto actually being able to smell the fear his words had just placed in Ares smirked and said, Welcome to my domain, where pain will become your only name and suffering will be your only desire. Six Naruto then stepped out of the walls, each holding Madara's gun buyer the Kusanagi. Naruto said your first round begins now. All six clones then blurred towards Ares, who barely blocked the attack from three of the six clones. The other three managed to land their attacks, leaving three deep slashes on his arm. Ares screaming in pain turned around and stabbed one of the clones in the heart. He gained wide eyes when the clone melted into ice. 
He was then slashed across his back making more of his blood spill onto the ice. He growling spun in a circle and managed to destroy all of the clones. Naruto watching this stomped his foot and Ares was soon pelted with billions of ice needles that numbed the part of his body they touched. Ares gained wide eyes when 12 clones of Naruto now stepped out of the ice dome, all having four arms and a weapon in each hand. Naruto said your second round begins now. Ares cursed hearing this and tried to shake the numbness off of himself, but reacted too late as six clones pounced on him and started to punish the god of war, making more of his blood spill into the dome. Outside of the dome Annabeth was amazed, turned on and terrified all at once. She was amazed that Naruto had created something so masterful and elegant out of ice. She was turned on because Naruto's body was letting our pheromones that were hitting her full force and making her want to jump Naruto's bones. She was terrified because the man she was in love with was proving himself to be a powerful being that wasn't afraid to fight. Percy was just plain out shitting himself, as the power Naruto was putting out would make even the mightiest monster whimper and run for cover. Grover was actually not afraid for some reason, almost as if he knew that Naruto would never use this power on him. The Aphrodite cabin a camp was up cheering for their brother as he battled the god of war. Said God's cabin was worried for their father, except for Clarice, who was for some reason turned on watching her father be absolutely destroyed by Naruto. Apollo's cabin was wondering if Ares was going to win this fight or not. The Athena cabin was shocked at the power Naruto was showing and wondered if Annabeth being him was really a good idea. It was like this for most of the camp, except for Luke who was very angry at the turn of events, as Percy was supposed to have died by now. But the gods, Hera was struggling to keep Nabari by her side, as apparently the sword had felt its master's power and wanted to return to his side instantly. She was also worried about how damp her panties were getting from just watching her son get the brutal beat down. Zeus was no longer pissed, but was very worried for the life of Ares, as the power Naruto was putting out rivaled a titan with ease. He had also realized just how lucky Hercules was, as if Naruto had used this power on him, he would be down a son already. Athena was scraping her plans on just having sex with Naruto and leaving. No now she wanted to marry him and have as many kids as he wanted, because what he was doing had turned her on so much, she could drown a child in her panties. Aphrodite knew for sure that she had to do everything within her power to get Naruto to forgive her, so she could get him to fuck her brains out and impregnate her. She was also rubbing her thighs together as like Athena she could most likely drown a child in her panties. Apollo was now in the same boat as Hermes and was already planning on the party for Naruto's ascension to godhood. Hell he even knew what Naruto was going to be the god of. Destruction, chaos and demons. Hermes was already getting ready to order to wine and entertainment for the epic party that was going to be Naruto's ascension. Hermes knew he was going to be so wasted at that party. Dionysus was laughing his red ass of at the ass kicking Naruto was giving his arrogant brother Ares and couldn't wait for the party that Naruto was going to get for his ascension to godhood. Hephaestus was really excited to meet Naruto as the boy was getting rid of his biggest headache and making said headache look like a rabid dog that needed to be put down a long time ago. Poseidon was now wondering what he was going to wear to Naruto's ascension to godhood, as Ares was a dead man walking, even he could tell that. Artemis with Naruto's headband pressed closely to her chest could literally hear her heart beating at a million miles a minute, as there was no doubt within her mind that she was in love with Naruto and knew that sooner or later she would be having his children. She was also wondering when he was going to come for his headband, as it was a part of his identity and what made him a ninja. Hades in the underworld was impressed and terrified at the power of the young god known as Naruto. He looking at his wife also knew that soon he would be loosing her and she'd finally be free of the curse he placed on her so long ago. Hell thinking on that he should most likely get rid of that before she met Naruto so that the young god didn't come after him. He shivered knowing that if Naruto did come after him that battle would reshape the underworld and he'd loose. Persephone licking her lips wanted Naruto and wanted him bad. Ares having managed to survive 12 rounds and defeated multiple clones of Naruto, was finally free of the ice temple of doom and was thanking Zeus that he had managed to do so. He landing on the ice cold beach turned and started to search for the real Naruto. Said person was sitting at the very top of his ice temple looking at Ares with boredom in his eyes. He standing up jumped down from his ice temple and landed directly in front of Ares, who snarled spotting his target. Ares asked are you ready to die brat? Naruto sighing said no, but you are. Ares snorting asked what are you talking about brat? Naruto sighing again pointed up. All eyes followed the direction he was pointing and every single living being blanched, spotting an absolutely huge meteor falling from the sky. Ares taking several steps back asked what the hell. Naruto said behold what really killed the dinosaurs and one of the most powerful jutsu known to Madara Chia. The meteor then caught on fire and to the horror of Ares roots and vines wrapped around him. Naruto turning around and looking Annabeth directly in the eyes said this is your protection from all that may even think to hurt you my dear Annabeth. 
Barry screamed as he tried to escape the roots and vines keeping him in place. Naruto then said behold your end Ares. Tengai Shinsei. The meteor was then revealed to actually be the large meteors that collided with each other and slammed into the exact place Ares was standing, creating a massive earthquake that could be felt all the way in North Carolina. When the smoke cleared, Annabeth gasped. There was absolutely nothing left of Ares, and all of the sand that once covered the shore of the beach had been superheated into glass. She then looked towards Naruto and did something she would deny to her very last breath. She swooned as Naruto had his eyes closed and was letting snow fall gently on his face. Naruto slowly opening all three of his eyes, said as the snow falls gently from the sky, the ground below shatters and rumbles. The broken shards of a thousand stained glass windows reveal the sad story a angry god, seeking revenge for the belief that something that he thought belonged to him was taken away from him. Naruto lifting his right hand up started to collect snow in it as he said, the structure of the snow reveals the instrument of his defeat, his untimely fall. Naruto closing his hand said he was felled in battle by a god of destruction, and then ten tails. Naruto then looking at the pink barrier that was still up dropped it, and shaking his hair blew all of the glass away. Once it was clear, Naruto walked straight up to Percy and grabbed the master bolt. Naruto lifting it up until it was in his face said I should just take this and make the big baby live without it or come and try to take it from me. Naruto dropping out of his god form, handed the master bolt back to Percy and said, but I have no need for it and would hate being the king of gods. He turning to look at Annabeth smirked as she was still swooning at his little display. He grabbing her face pulled her into a kiss that made the daughter of Athena's left leg curl up behind her. Annabeth felt like she was in heaven and never wanted to leave. They kissed like this for about five minutes when a blushing Grover coughed. Naruto ending the kiss had a smirk on his face, while Annabeth had a healthy blush on her face. Naruto disconnecting himself from Annabeth who whimpered said you three need to get the big baby his little toy. He turning around and walking towards the ocean, said Percy make sure you don't lose that thing, Annabeth, I'll see you later. Grover, you did a good job. He then stomping his right foot down, caused the earth to mend and the tsunami that had formed from the earthquake to vanish. Naruto once sure all of the disasters were avoided, cracked his knuckles said now if you excuse me I have somewhere to be. He then to the continued shock of everyone watching vanished in a burst of black butterflies. Annabeth with hearts for her eyes said he's so dreamy. Grover rolling his eyes said we need to get moving. Percy also rolling his eyes said we should return the master bolt. End chapter. So this part ends here. If you want to see next part of this series. Like the video now and share the story with your friends. Bye bye.